UI and UX the proverbial Mario and Luigi of design terminology. If you've played games, you've likely heard of the term UI somewhere before. It stands for user interface and sometimes gets mentioned when discussing a game online. Comparatively, UX is the less famous brother between the two. It stands for user experience and you might not have heard of it. If you've ever looked up any kind of digital design, you might see it casually mentioned alongside UI, forming a popular popular buzzword combo of UI and UX. However, they both mean very different things. Back when I was studying to become a game designer during my university days, a design professor once gave a lecture about UI and UX and brought up various games as case studies of good and bad UI. One such game was Persona 5, a game universally praised for its amazing aesthetic, menus and stylishness. Multiple reviewers, content creators and design channels worldwide gushed about how much they loved this game's UI. So I'm sure you're thinking this is an obvious example of a great UI, right? Well, younger me certainly thought so. But no. In fact, Persona 5 was the very first case study of bad game UI that the professor brought up. And this professor was no hack either. He was an industry veteran with many years of work experience. I trust his design judgement over even my own. Now, I'm sure your confusion is understandable. I myself was confused back then too. I only understood the full meaning behind that lecture after graduating and getting some hands-on experience with UI and UX while working as a full-time game designer myself. However, you, my dear viewer, are a critical thinker, and as the critical thinker you are, you should choose to question the validity of these sources. You simply shouldn't blindly trust what people say on the internet in this day and age. Don't just parrot the opinions of content creators online just because they are popular or funny. That also includes me, I'm also a random dude on the internet. Only trust the word of a professional, verified expert and reputable source. So here here is an opinion from said reputable source, a creator whose design knowledge you should not only know, but have trusted time and time again. We shall now invoke the word of God himself. By which I mean we quote Masahiro Sakurai, creator of the Super Smash Bros. and Kirby franchises. いや、スタイルが高いという言葉そのものが人の価値観に移動するので一概には言い切れないですけれども。やっぱり一番わかりやすいのはペルソナシリーズでしょうね。非常にスタイリッシュな UI構成。スタイリッシュな UI としては断ト
Persona 5 is a rare example of a game with a bad UI but amazing UX. And the hypothesis behind this disconnect is because players have confused and conflated the meanings of UI and UX together. While I might not be a dedicated UI or UX designer or specialist, I think my knowledge is enough for a, shall we say, very basic explanation on what is UI and UX design. So let's begin with definitions. Boring but necessary. The user interface, to put simply, consists of the visual elements in the game meant to provide information to the player and help them navigate to where they need to go. Within the context of games and to most players, examples of UI would be stuff like information displayed on the HUD or heads up display, battle commands, shot menus, and so on. At its most foundational level, a good UI is all about communicating important information about the cover game state to players conveniently, efficiently, and unambiguously. However, UI comes in many forms, some of which are more advanced. Sometimes you get fun stuff like interactable UI on touch screens where the UI elements can be tapped or clicked, resulting in additional feedback. Sometimes you get cool stuff like diegetic UI, where the information naturally exists in the game world and contributes towards an immersive experience. Sometimes you get useful stuff like dynamic UI, where the way that information is presented changes based on factors out of your control, like time or date, which helps direct a user's attention to different things depending on different contexts. All of these fancy forms of UI have one thing in common. They all serve to enhance the UX. User experience is a somewhat difficult thing to cleanly put into words and define. Depending on the designer you ask, the definition of UX you receive will all be slightly different. But in a nutshell, the user experience is well, the entire experience of using a product. It encompasses every possible aspect about how it feels to use a certain product, ranging from feedback to aesthetics to sound to movement to everything. Have you ever played a game where you thought to yourself, Well, damn, this felt good. That's UX design at work. Everything from the audio to animations to gameplay all culminated in the creation of that satisfying experience. It is an area of design in which all other areas of design indirectly contribute towards. This is why UX is such a hard concept to grasp for normal gamers and newbie designers. To an average person, saying that a game is good because the game experience is good is basically saying that well, a game is good because the game is good. It is difficult to explain why a specific point in a game experience feels good without talking about one of the other fields of design in the process. And this all leads to people conflating all of these terms together. Let's say we are in a modern business hub like Singapore and a hotel is getting built. Nice to meet you. I'm Kaveh, an architect. On a foundational level, an architect will dictate the building's structure and layout, predicting roughly how guests will move from one room to another. Construction crews will handle the boring but necessary ground level decisions, such as how much building material gets used and the general way the building gets built. Then an interior designer comes to dictate how the hotel's aesthetic should be handled, considering all kinds of elements such as the decor, the woodwork, lighting, furnishings and so on all of which involves contacting the respective specialist craftsmen. And of course, there are the staff, who will service guests and operate and manage the facilities. A UX designer serves a function roughly similar to the interior designer from the example. They aren't involved in the hotel's construction, but are occupied instead with the variety of factors which create the overall feel of the guest experience. Depending on whether the hotel is meant to be a luxury hotel, business hotel, or regular hotel, the interior designer will decorate the hotel differently to create an experience that best appeals to the respective target clientele. Whereas a UI designer is sort of like the architect, directing the hotel's layout and the flow of guests between rooms. They aren't concerned with how the building is decorated 
decorated or the guest experience at all, but I instead focused on the building's overall functionality and usability. Regardless of what style of hotel it ends up being or what kind of guests it aims to attract, the building's layout is the same throughout, and guests should be able to locate all of a hotel's functions that they need. So when a hotel guest wants to leave a positive review praising the hotel, who do they credit? The architect for the sensible layout? The construction crew for the building? The interior designer for creating the guest experience? The craftsman for their high quality work? Or the operations staff for the excellent service? Each person's job and duties have an indirect effect on another person's duties, and all of them collectively contribute towards a positive guest experience. The guests will probably not be able to pinpoint exactly which part of their experience they enjoyed or who was responsible for it, so their review will be general and unspecific. This analogy isn't perfect. It is heavily simplified and the comparisons between the jobs are a little bit of a stretch. There's a lot more involved regarding the duties of UI and UX designers, but seeing as I myself am not a professional UI or UX designer, it would not feel right to delve too far and risk spreading misinformation about the jobs. Ultimately, the point is that UI and UX are different disciplines and focus on different things, but they are interwoven and directly influenced each other. Even if it is on a subconscious level, a good UI designer will have a basic idea of how their UI will be aesthetically presented to a player, and a good UX designer will have some sense of proper layout and functionality. For a game UI to be great, not only must it be functional, but it should also look and feel presentable. And for a game's UX to feel good, the UI should be well organized so that players can find exactly what they need with ease and cleanly provide any necessary information a player might need. This is how and why the meanings of UI and UX have become conflated in many people's eyes. Both are essential and need to work together for the sake of the final product, and if one aspect is handled poorly, it is likely that the other aspect will not be so great either. It is generally rare for a game to have a bad UI and still maintain a good UX, but it isn't impossible. And this is where we get to Persona 5. When both my professor and Mr. Sakurai criticize Persona 5's UI, this is what they meant. The UI is extremely stylish, but also hard to derive information from. Information is scattered all across the screen in a wide variety of colors, fonts, positions, and layouts that the game's menu and HUD can appear overwhelming and difficult to understand. Shops and menus don't follow a consistent design hierarchy, meaning your eyes are always being redirected towards different locations on the game screen depending on who you're talking to. Every menu you switch to is radically different from the previous one, and it can take time for a player to reorientate themselves. Even the line between what is a background decorative element and foreground information is blurred, as statistical data can get integrated into the background and vice versa. As far as readability is concerned, Persona 5 is not great, because it doesn't cleanly convey information. In battles and in menus, players might find themselves needing to stop and stare at the screen to decipher what is going on. Some of you will likely comment and say that the UI isn't so bad after you play the game for a while and get used to the menu layouts. But let me ask you this, in what other game do you ever need to practice to learn how to read a menu? But that comment is still correct, and for good reason. Despite how overwhelming it looks, the UI itself is well planned. Information is well categorized and placed in the menu where it is most logical to be found, and the flow and connection between menus makes perfect sense. All shop menus are also well distributed to the relevant NPC, who are in turn all well distributed across the game world and can be found easily within the map. In spite of how overwhelming everything looks, the UI is arranged in a way where players can't get lost. Under Beneath all of the visual chaos, there is still a proper sense of order and arrangement, and a player can indeed reasonably get used to the UI and reliably get information from it after some time. This is like if the hotel's interior decorator went crazy with their decor and filled money. every room with over-the-top modern art like paintings and statues and whatnot.
The hotel will be a visual overload, but guests can still navigate the building because of the architect's layout. The entrance of the building would still logically lead to the lobby, where the concierge and the front desk can be found. The lobby would then connect to an elevator lobby. Each floor would then consist of the elevator lobby, hallways and rooms sorted by number. Everything is still in the correct and logical place that it needs to be. The UI's issue lies solely in readability and communicating information. Even though information is located in a logical place, the process of reading and understanding that information is made difficult because of the chaotic and stylish way that it is presented. It's as if a hotel guest walks from the main lobby into the elevator lobby, but is confused about where he is because all of the elevator doors are decorated to look like giant portraits or something. Do you remember what Mr. Sakurai said earlier? If Persona 5 had opted for traditional menus just to improve readability, it'd kill a big part about what makes the game so fun. And that's the point. Those very same decisions which make the UI difficult to read also make the game fun to experience. This is why my university professor and Mr. Sakurai reacted negatively to Persona 5's UI. It adopted a style which intentionally sacrificed its UI's readability and made it harder to use, which goes against the functional requirements that UI is intended to fulfill. However, in doing so, the UI formed a big part of the game's identity and became fun to use, greatly improving the overall UX. This is only possible because, underneath all of the visual clutter, the UI's layout itself is still properly organized, with information being located in logical places. Even though the UI sacrificed readability for style, it still maintained proper functionality and organizational layout. However, the act of sacrificing readability must still be recognized, which would be objectively considered a bad UI practice, even if it did result in a better game. This is the meaning behind my university lecturer's words. Of course, Persona 5 isn't the only game to do this. Another fun example is the Dead Space series, which adopts a diegetic UI, which means the UI naturally originates from an in-universe source. A famous element of the game is that there is no HUD, and player character Isaac Clarke's health is instead represented by a coloured tube on his exosuit's spine. But this also extends to many of the game's menus, which take the form of device screens or holographic interfaces that exist within the game's world. The UI's functionality had to make some sacrifices to do this, such as the available space being more limited, the font being made a bit unclear to read due to static, and Isaac occupying like one third of the screen space. But the resultant UX and gameplay experience is a big part of what gives Dead Space its unique identity as a franchise. Games like these prove that, if handled well, players will not mind some of the more functional aspects of a game's UI being harder to understand if it makes the game more fun. Even if important information might be harder to read, players will forgive it as long as the information is still present. So what does this all mean? Is UX the end-all be-all? Should every game adopt Persona 5's UI philosophy from now on? Should we completely forego safe and boring UIs and just go all in on stylish and impractical ones for the sake of a cool user experience? No, absolutely not. At least not without being careful about it. If you've watched design channels like Game Maker's Toolkit or read any online discussion regarding Persona 5's UI, you've probably heard a point about how Persona 5's chaotic UI works well because it reflects the theme of the game's story, being about rebellion and so on. In fact, I'd be thoroughly unsurprised if there isn't at least one comment on this video mentioning that. And I must say, that point is correct, because the UI does thematically fit the game perfectly. But that isn't the main reason why this UI works. In fact, I'd say it isn't an important reason at all. And I personally find it a bit tiring to hear people mention and treat it as if it's the big reason. A game's UI can be as narratively thematic as it wants, but it doesn't matter at all if a player cannot use it. 
Above all else, a good UI is about functionality and usability. Style comes secondary. One point that is never discussed is that Persona 5 can afford to have a UI like this, whereas many games cannot. Despite the UI's awkward readability, it ultimately does not negatively impact the game experience for most people, and that is because of one simple reason. Persona 5 is a turn-based game. Turn-based formats such as JRPGs or card games tend to have a reputation for being painfully slow and boring. Combat gameplay consists of just selecting options and waiting for animations to end. Players spend a lot of time navigating through menus, doing stuff like managing things in inventory, or customizing decks or personas or party members. Battle animations are numerous and repetitive, and watching them takes up a huge amount of playtime. When you strip away all of Persona 5's style and reduce it to its most fundamental components, you realize that most of its gameplay is essentially just navigating through menus and waiting, with little gameplay involving fast player reactions or time pressure. And this is why Persona 5's UI style works. Time. Persona being a turn-based JRPG game means there is no time pressure on the player for anything at all. Even if you consider the game menu or the in-battle HUD to be cluttered or difficult to read, Persona 5's turn-based nature gives the player all the time in the world to stare at the screen and make sense of everything. Morgana could be at 1 HP for 10 minutes as you search through menus for a way to heal him, and Iwai can let you spend an hour browsing his shop. The game will patiently wait for you to take your time. In turn, the chaotic UI helps conceal the waiting. Because of how dynamic it is and how much things are constantly moving, navigating through the endless shops and menus of a JRPG doesn't feel tedious or boring because there's that sense of constant motion that gives your brain things to pay attention to and tricks your brain into thinking that navigating a menu is more exciting than it actually is. This combination of the slow, methodical pacing of the turn-based game format and the swift, constantly shifting visuals of the chaotic UI style naturally compensate for each other's respective downsides while emphasizing their respective strengths. But if you took this same UI style and applied it to a real-time game, it doesn't easily work. Real-time games need to strike a comfortable balance between style and functionality, prioritizing having a readable UI first and having a thematically pleasing UX as secondary. Because of the pacing of these games, information clarity must be prioritized whenever possible to allow for fair and quick decision making. Hades has a visually thematic UI, but the bulk of it is kept reserved to menus where time pressure is a non-factor. During combat, the UI is kept minimal and neatly to the side, leaving the playable area open and unobstructed. Guilty Gear Strive has tons of big, flashy UI elements and callouts like counter popping up everywhere, but will slow down the game for a brief second to give players time to process what is happening. Additionally, HUD UI elements such as the health bars and combo counter actually exist in the background of the game, meaning that the fighters will always appear above them and are never obstructed from view and can thus be easy to keep track of. These UI elements are stylish and thematically appropriate, and even though they are flashy and distracting, they do not obstruct the gameplay experience at all. Persona 5's UI simply does not work for such a game pace. At least, uh, not yet. Oh, where is my Persona 5 Arena spin-off, Arxis? Where is it? Um, speaking of spin-offs, since Persona 5 is the current Atlas moneymaker, we don't actually need to deal with hypotheticals. We have a perfect real-life example of that very UI not working. Persona 5 Strikers is a spin-off and narrative sequel game which applies Persona 5 to the fast-paced Dynasty Warriors style action gameplay. And since it is considered to still be a Persona 5 game, Strikers inherits the base game's UI style as well. Strikers shows how that same UI style, which was so perfect for a turn-based JRPG format, is a terrible fit for a real-time action game. 
HUD elements like controls, health bars, changing status information, Futaba's commentary and mission information are constantly flying everywhere and bombarding your sensors, making it almost impossible to focus on anything during combat. Huge amounts of the screen are occupied and taken up by the HUD, giving you relatively little visual space to play with it. The layout of every UI element is in a correct and logical place, but because of the chaotic art style and fast pace of the game, extracting said information from the UI is difficult, and the UI's functionality suffers as a result. In base Persona 5, the chaos was manageable because players can take their time to digest and methodically navigate through it. But in Strikers, it's practically unusable because the game's format doesn't afford the player that luxury of time. It only gives you time to process things when you call for a Persona skill, and that's because it literally stops time to let you think and decide on what to do. <laughs> My persona has gained new power. What a skill! Or when you are sorting through menus where there is no time pressure, just like a JRPG. Strikers fully embraced its base game's bold and stylish UI style, but did not properly scale it back or adapt it to fit the functionality needs of a different game genre. The combat UI ends up obstructing a lot of action and overwhelms the player with too many attention-grabbing elements in too little time, making its information borderline unusable as a result. Compared to the earlier examples of Hades and Guilty Gear, Strikers UI makes it difficult to tell what is going on at any particular time, making quick, real-time decisions more difficult than they need to be. The Persona 5 UI is still thematically appropriate and visually appealing, but because Strikers is a faster-paced action game, the player needs to make quick decisions and the UI impedes gameplay as a result. Players simply don't have the luxury of time to slowly process what the UI is saying. In this situation, it doesn't matter if the UI is thematically fitting, contributes to the game's narrative, or is stylish. The UI has failed to deliver important information to a player at the time it is needed, meaning it has failed in its functional purpose and created an overall worse UX as a result. Basically, if you want to use a stylish but hard to read UI style, consider the game's context and use it carefully. Don't get distracted by grandiose concepts like story and narrative themes. Remember that UI is all about functionality first, and the readability and organizational layout still need to be properly managed. You need to consider whether that UI style makes sense for that game's genre and nature. Base Persona 5's turn-based format means that a super stylish and hard-to-read UI can create a fun and dynamic battle UX. But Striker's real-time action format meant that same super stylish and hard-to-read UI resulted in a difficult to understand and negative combat UX. Before you break the rules of UI, understand whether a game can afford to break those rules. Determine whether the benefits of breaking these rules are worth the costs, and be mindful to break the correct rules, and not go about doing things without a plan. Ultimately, a UI should never go so far to the extent that it can be considered unusable. This explains the difference in opinions regarding Persona 5's UI. It all stems from the confusion between two separate terms, UI and UX. When people comment or criticize a game's UI, they might actually be referring to its impact on the game's overall UX. And the reason why this happens is because UX is such a rarely seen and difficult to define concept that it doesn't exist to regular people. At the end of the day, the idea of UX just isn't known to all players, game reviewers, or even non-design related developers like programmers or management. It's a term which encompasses so much of a game's experience that it's nearly impossible to talk about anything in a game without UX's involvement at all. So when a rare game like Persona 5 shows up, which sacrifices its UI's readability aspects for the sake of a greater UX, people get the terms mixed up and it leads to all kinds of minor confusion. Still, I hope this video has at least given you some kind of new insight 
into an important yet oft overlooked area of the game design process. Now, the next time you ever see someone on Reddit or some other online place complain or commend Persona 5 for having terrible or amazing UI, you can chime in and clarify that it's actually the UX and sound smart in whatever pointless online internet argument that may be. If you are a normal person, I hope this video was a fun and interesting introduction into the concepts of UI UX. If you are a design student of some kind, then I hope that whatever knowledge I might have may have helped you better understand the difference between UI and UX a bit. If you are specifically a student from DigiPen, then my life as a designer really has come full circle. If you are already a UI or UX designer, then I have no idea why you are watching this because your knowledge likely surpasses as mine. But I love it if you could comment and tell me if my explanation was good and accurate. Regardless of whoever you are, if you've enjoyed this video, leave me a like. Because just like any RPG, it's very fun to see big numbers. If you've enjoyed it enough to want to hear me talk about other game design stuff, then here is another video. I mainly enjoy talking about Pokemon's game design, but I'm also considering looking into other games too. Some people have also asked me to create a Discord, so I've done so. Feel free to join if you'd like to talk about games with other people or ask me stuff directly. If not, then I'll see you next time. I shall bid you good night.